Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. What's happening there, Drew Scare? Oh, I, ah, you know, I went on an eating binge and I was thinking about you. Me too. But mine was scary. What'd you do? A uh, hamburger, two bags of peanuts. Did you uh, go to a ball game? Yeah. Then I went to a talent show for my kids. I had a big thing of chicken with rice. Then I went to a friend's house, had two huge pieces of quiche. What then the? I had a bowl of macaroni. This keeps going. This is all really? in like three hours. I know. How's that uh, that sort of game on thing work with the eating? It, it's I I can't. Eat. I was watching myself and thinking, how could, what what the hell's going on here? And just to finish it off, I stopped at Winchell's just uh, before I got the freeway, <laughs> just to disgust myself. <laughs> I, thought, I couldn't I, believe it. You're passionate, passionate I thought, man. I thought, well, I was just going. I'm going to work out tomorrow, run, and stuff. That's what I'm going to purge tomorrow. It's it's funny it's when you have this purging sort of, impulse, sort of that uh, defecate on yourself kind of thing. Wow. Where, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have to like punish. You have to. It's crazy. Yeah. You, you know, it's funny. Or you know, they make everything. What happens to me around uh, the uh, Jimmy Kimmel show is they bring over these boxes of great things like Junior Mints. Right. and uh, Or those Peppermint Patty Mints. Mm. And they make this uh, sort of small size ones, mm-hmm. about the size of a, a thick silver dollar. Mm-hmm. And here's the problem. You'd think it would be good because it's small, but because it's small, you eat 28 of them. Yeah. They should start making stuff like hubcap Huge. size. Yeah, yes. yeah novelty size. Yeah. Where you wouldn't even want to get started on. Great idea. This is what they need yeah. to do, because they bring these things over and you're just staring at them. And they you're, even you're like have tiddlings, you're flipping them in. They, they even have a dispenser. It's like the the box rips open at the bottom and then sort of stands upright and the yeah. tongue sort of hangs out. And you just you grab one or two each time you pass the thing. And once you get that sort of chocolatey mint thing going, in, you get a taste for it. it's like blood. But what's with the macaroni and the key? I mean, what is that? I don't know, but I, I'll tell you when it comes to when it comes to uh, the sort of uh, diets or whether it's you know smoking or heroin or whatever it is you're trying not to do. Soon as you soon as you crack the door open and stuff your ass flood. in that crack, flood. It's game on. You know what it was? I'm realizing what it was. I, I decided. Okay, I I I've been kind of quasi hungry all day, and I thought, hey, tired of that. I want to be full. I want to feel full. Well, you yeah, got it. Buddy. I, I got there. Yeah. yeah, Winchell's. Yeah, Drew, in great shape. But you actually stopped at a donut shop on the way here. Oh yeah, alone. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's something, Drew. Yeah, I'm telling you. You're fat, Jake. Yes. You're 21. What's up? I um I'm attracted to extremely fat women, and I've never really heard of this before. And I was just wondering if there's something wrong with that. Or Drew, you better hope your wife's into fat dudes. <laughs> The new Drew is going to be the uh, big rotund Drew. Refrigerator. Are you really into fat women? Yeah, seriously. That's good. That's good. What's wrong with that? That's right. Well, you got your pick of the litter. I guess, but I mean, I, I'm with like my girlfriend now, and I want her to be bigger and stuff. No, oh, uh, that's got to go over big. This sounds bogus to me. What? Jake, bogus. Yeah. Sorry, no, buddy. Re- I, no, I'm I'm dead serious. You want to, you like her? Well, how much does she weigh now? She's about 5'11". She probably weighs 180. And what'd you like to see her up at? I This is for real. I really like women between like 200 and 500 pounds. So why don't you date somebody <laughs> else? Hold on a second. It's a little pretty good 200 and 500 uh, is two people. Hold on a second. You can't put two people in your range yeah. you, you know, or, or, or a whole third person. Right. Within the, you got to stay in the person range. Yeah. You, you can't double where you're at. You can't say, mm, I make between 6 and $18 an hour. Because you'd be, be between 6 and $8 an hour. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. All right. I don't know if I buy this uh, young Yeah, Jake I'm, I'm having here. trouble myself. But. Jake? I, well, have you ever heard of this before? Like, yes. No. Certainly. Yeah. No, yeah, but, now of. it's bogus. Not in. Oh. It's bogus. Whenever you get that, have you ever heard of this before? No, no guy. No all, all those ever, magazines are for nobody. Yeah, he's never, no, guy, no man has ever liked a fat chick. 
Doctor Drew, come on! I, I need some help here. Seriously, oh, no, yeah, he's yeah, it, so yeah. bogus. Oh wow! Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Drew, what's wrong with you? Know, here's what happens. Drew's pager went off about halfway into the call. He looked down. He got a little flustered. He belched up a Jimmy from one of the donuts he ate ten minutes ago, and it threw him all off. No, I was just waiting to hear it evolve. He wasn't saying anything that really got to me, you know? Yeah. Until the end there when it was like, forget it. White guy wanting his girlfriend fatter? Please. Let's uh, move forward. Wait a minute. I just thought about something. Hmm. You hmm. went to Winchell's and didn't grab any, like, just a dozen donuts for us, maybe? I was so disgusted with myself that I was there. It was, I was too preoccupied. It's 240 It's like $2.40. No, I would have happily done if I if it occurred, if I had been so... Uh, had been so caught up in his own fugue, disease. I was in a fugue state of some kind. Mm-hmm. He's a madman. That's right. He punched his head through the glass display case and uh, just grabbed a handful of uh, toffee bar. And what, are those, what are the bars? Maple bars. Ugh. Yeah. What did you get over there, Drew? Glazed twist. Glazed twist? No. They, you know the best? The cake and the buttermilk are the best. Yeah. The buttermilk's not a donut. It's a cake. It's a cake that's round with a hole in it. No, that's they're, not, they're, they're bars, even. They're, they're, they're like old-fashioned. They're weird with the weird... Buttermilk and the cake ones are the best. The cake. I don't like the ones that are all airy Fluffy, inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like pie. I like pie. I like cake donuts, ironically. If they had pie donuts, I'd be into them. Lindsay? Yeah. You're 20? Yes. What's up? Um, I just recently have been getting into going to, like, music festivals and music shows, and, um... I've been introduced to some, like, harder drugs. I, I've smoked pot, like, on and off since high school, but not, I'm not, like, I don't do it very much. Um, I tried LSD once, and I tried ecstasy twice, and I enjoyed it both times. I don't want to, like, do them a lot because I know that they're dangerous, but um, I don't actually know, like, what the dangers are, and I kind of wanted to find out before well, I tried them again. It's unfortunate when you like the drug because then the, the increase is the probability that you're going to do it again. You know, yeah. if you had a bad well, trip... I, I'm, I'm yeah. in school, and okay, I, listen. I like just listen, I'm, just listen. If you had a bad trip, it would dec- you wouldn't do it again. So people are yeah. people are somehow preoccupied. Oh, the bad trip is what's going to happen when you do acid or ecstasy. No, I welcome the bad trip. That's Drew a loves thing. a bad, bad trip. Tri- I wish bad trips on you all, so you don't do that drug again. Because the problem is there's cumulative damage from these drugs. The clinical symptoms we see from LSD. If you if you still see trailers after fast moving objects. You are going to have profound, profound depressions from the damage caused by the LSD. Too so bad you didn't have a bad trip tonight when you're uh, on your. Uh, it was a bad trip. That's why I didn't get donuts for anybody. Calorie, and uh, there's also something called a post hallucinogenic perceptual disorder, where you can get locked into what feels like a sort of a persistent LSD state. You're like you're getting locked in kind of a dreamlike state. Can be, that can be semi permanent. That too. Is, if you do it a lot, like no, Lindsay, like Lindsay, a- Lindsay. Oh, Drew. N- no. No, just listen to me. Just listen. She's listening. Yeah, no, it doesn't. You can one time can do it. Yes, well, do, you do twenty. Yeah, dude. you do twenty or thirty times. Yes, it will happen. Like you can pretty much guarantee it. You can do it with just one time. The same thing with ecstasy. Ecstasy though is probably more neurotoxic. Uh, it, it hits a part of the brain called the limbic system, and it affects memory and mood. There's a very characteristic syndrome where people like you, who were once very social, suddenly start withdrawing. Then they get agoraphobic, panic attacks, and the depressions become severe. And I've seen, I see this all the time from ecstasy. Nah, but good times. But good times otherwise. All right, yeah. so just smoke the weed and drink some wine coolers, do a beer bong once in a while, all right? Okay. All right. All right. All right, let's uh, talk to uh, Joshua. Joshua? Hey, what's up? You're 22. Drew, who pages you at 12.08 every other night? The hospital. <laughs> Zero idea. No, no not, concept not, of the they're schedule? They're not much in the clock. They're like, somebody's sick. They need now. They need you. But let me say this, Drew. If, yeah. uh, here, here's what I would say to anyone who called me at uh, 12.05. When I had a job that was on the air for the last 12 years at 10 o'clock, I would just say to everybody, you can, you know, you can pay. Yeah, different you, nurses pay. every night, different shows. You can't talk. They don't know who you are. No? They don't like know you do sick, a radio sick, every night. Sick person. But they, you know your wife's buzzing away and your relatives. Knows. Hospital. Not this time. but. Yeah. Uh, Oh, no, yeah, to... this time, but everyone, mm-hmm. everyone buzzes you because you don't straighten them out. So eight times out of ten, it's the hospital. Eight times out of ten, it's the hospital, but the other six times, <laughs> it's your wife or somebody you should know better. I'm just saying, just you, you got to pipe up and spread the word. Yeah. Eh? You're, you're, you're going to fix that. me, my You're going to fix my eating disorder and my codependency in one night. That's right. Yeah. Were we talking to Joshua? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Twenty-two. What's up? 
Oh, uh, well, uh, this is all about me and my wife. I'm 22. She's 19. Uh, we've been married for four months. We've known each other since basically kindergarten almost. Mm-hmm. Um, my basic problem is that uh, we've been dating for three years. A year and a half into it, she gave it up to me. <laughs> and uh, we've done like our almost our entire love life has been 90% missionary. My question is, is, how can I get her into something a little bit more provocative? Well, what happened to that other 10%? The other 10% is like at least, you know, oral. Oh. Minimum. So you don't, you don't count that as foreplay. So the only position for intercourse is missionary, period. Yes. And she won't move around? You don't try moving around or anything? Well, she's, she's tried to ride before, but she won't do it because it hurts too much. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I, well, see, not to brag too much, but I mm-hmm. am, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is, she, is she prudish? Is she religious? Uh, she used to be religious. She didn't like the fact that we had sex prior to marriage. Hmm. Is, is there any punishment going on? I mean, is there any feeling of you coerced her into doing something she didn't want to do that went against her religion or she's angry at you for not listening or anything like that? Uh, not that I would... I, I wouldn't think that way. We have at least, you know, once or twice a day sex. Really? Yeah, but it's always the same thing. Once or twice a day... She, well, I mean, well, the first time we had it, we had it for six hours straight. And then we woke up in the morning and did it. Wait, hold on a second. I love when people give these sort of retarded tidbits of information that mean nothing. Mm-hmm. He's been married for a few years. Uh, it's been a year and a half. And I go, geez, you have sex twice a day? And he's like, well, the first time we did it, it went on for six hours. Two years ago? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. All right, well, first time you did it, you banged her head up against the headboard or you spilt the beer or the smoke alarm went off. Is this, you did it for, what does this mean, Drew? I don't know. Are they just really into each other? Uh-uh. Is that, what's that mean? And yet he's big and it hurts and what? what? All right. <laughs> uh, you did it for six hours two years ago. A year and a half ago, sir. Okay. That... Well, we've, all, we've only been married for four months and since we've got married, it's, you know, Okay, but okay, but here here's what's confusing. You're doing it a lot. I'm surprised. And is, who's initiating it? You? Yes, mostly. You're just surprised that somebody that is feeling uncomfortable with her sexuality would be this open would, to this. Would be up for ten times a week. Yeah. Right. Well, see, I also heard that women, you know, they don't reach reach their sexual peak until they're about what twenty six, twenty eight. Uh, maybe maybe add ten years to that. Unfortunately. Well, okay. Oh. Listen. Here's the thing. Uh, Joshua, maybe she feels like you're kind of pushing the sex sled a little, and she's just she's not involved with the whole process. Let me talk to Drew again. Yeah, the so something... doesn't it sound like John? Josh has got like a plan for his balls. Yes, that yeah. sort of includes her, but not not just in a receptive way. Yeah, it includes her vagina, but not her. Right. Mm-hmm. He's got plans. Like yeah. I, first time we did, it, we did it for six hours. Yeah, we do it once or twice a day. She's not. Uh, but she just, she tries riding on top, but I'm too big. But I do hear she will be coming in <laughs> to her sexual prime in six, eight years. Is that correct, sir? <laughs> sir? Yeah. Four eyes. Is that correct? You yeah. with the donuts on the breath? Yeah. Is that true, sir? Yes, yeah, sir. You're, you claim to be a doctor, sir? Mm-hmm. What kind of doctor, sir? Love doctor. Right? Love doctor? Yeah. Okay, six, eight years. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to convene with my balls. We're going to uh, present a proposal to her vulva. And we're going to give 48 hours to get back to us. Okay, not including the weekend. That will be work days. Okay, sir? Yeah, it's like yeah. All right, Joshua. <laughs> yeah, you. I think you need to uh, you sort of talk s- to your wife. Sort of, yeah, just sort of talk to her. Don't have sex with her one day or a couple, maybe a week. Well, Give not her a week a, off. Five you, days. That's that's gonna go crazy. But five days. Take a couple of days off. <laughs> tell her you just want to. Uh, tell her you just want to draw her bath and give her a massage. She's well, been, see, I give her daily massages though, and I give her yeah. plenty of foreplay. Do you work? Yeah, uh, yes, I do. I work a uh, nighttime job. Unfortunately, I'm a shift leader at a like a no name franchise. Hmm. All right, and I I can't f- I, I I can't figure out where she's coming from. It is she yeah. she just sort of stands around and waits for you to initiate sex, and then how about uh, what's wrong with doggy? Ever tried doggy position with her? Well, we've tried doggy before, but she doesn't like it. She says it feels like she's being put down. Yeah. Does she have any uh, 
I, history all I know of is any he, abuse or anything? Uh, not to my knowledge. All right. He's married somebody that he knew she had a certain proclivity and wasn't prone to sort of stretch out and enjoy that. I mean, if he forces her, you know, this is like this is like forcing women to have anal sex. She yeah. will resent him uh. for for forcing this, for making you know, for making such a big deal out of the mechanics. Women don't. Okay, yeah. but here's the deal, fellas. And here's what happens with relationships. One person starts heading one direction. The other person starts heading another direction. There's this whole unspoken energy that goes on. Yeah. Meanwhile, there's more and more anger, and it translates into less and less sex for the guy yeah. and less and less uh, experimentation for the girls right. in the bedroom. And they start resenting you, and then you're screwed. Uh, this is so, what happens with all women. Right. Teenage girls do this with yes. their moms and their dads. Here's the whole thing. Uh just communicate. Don't act like you have such a sexual agenda right. all the time. It's That's not. Right. It's not your job to try to stop thinking. I got to get her to do something she doesn't want right. to do. Stop thinking in terms. Of, I give her the massage. I I do this thing to her so that right because the massage is so she'll have sex. No, give her the massage and then stop. Right and just commune. Just talk. That's right. Just, just for a few just days. Beat off on her. Mm -hmm. I agree. Christina. Yeah. Uh oh, fifteen. Yes. What's up? Um, well, first of all, I want to tell Adam that I love you so much. Thanks, baby. Like, when I used to pray when I went to church, I would pray that you wouldn't get married and you'd wait for me. Oh, oh really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got I married, but I'm all, still waiting. I cried all night on your wedding day. No. Me too. And all, well, <laughs> that makes me happy. I'm so sorry. Yeah. But, um, I try so hard. I mean, I searched for, uh, I was going to go to H.A. Festival. Are mm -hmm. you going? Uh, yeah, we, we might go. That, yeah, yeah. We, we do have to talk about that. Well, we know you go every year, and I went got tickets this year. <laughs> and I got an outfit just to wear for you. Really? And I got you a present. Wow. And I got grounded. Oh. And my disgusting sister is going inside of me. Really? She's yeah. going this year? Or? She's going this year, and I was going to go, and I got you a Blood, Sweat, and Tears record. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I can send it to you. Yeah. It's well, well wait a second. Wait a second. And I got a black tank top to wear and a beautiful skirt. What, uh, hold on, baby doll. What'd you get grounded for? Well, part of my, that's part of my question. Okay, mm -hmm. go. All right, I was dating this guy for about three months, mm -hmm. and my parents found out this Sunday. And they were very upset, and I'm grounded. I can't really do anything, and I'm not allowed to date him. And I was kind of wondering if I should continue the relationship. You like what? You, she wonders. I, I thought there was going to be more there, yeah. too. Your well, parents I, found out. What's wrong with this guy? Well, he's a, quite a bit older than me, and he's kind of got a not-so-great job. But uh, How old is he? 22. 22. You're 15. That's no good. What? Are you in the 10th grade? You need to be with a 38-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I'm in ninth grade. You're in the ninth grade. Yeah, and, and you, he works at a tattoo parlor, and my and my parents are actually there. Um, <laughs> he owns a tattoo parlor. No, he works on. He wor works working at a better. tattoo parlor is a is a joke answer. It's like the sitcom <laughs> yeah. thing, like dads dads going. I can't believe what does he do for? It? He works at a tattoo parlor, and then laughter and a little bit of applause. It's, it's really it's really. Uh, it's yeah. the joke it's answer to the answer. drive drive your parents crazy sitcom. Right? Uh, are your are your parents well to do? Uh, my dad's a pretty successful accountant. Mm -hmm. It's payback time now. Mm -hmm. Well, there's your have witnesses, and Ooh. They want oh boy. Now, I'm already yeah. kicked out of paradise. Apparently, you're yeah. out of paradise. Well, like mm -hmm. not very many people get in, but I was yeah. kicked out long ago. Yeah, <laughs> is that where the Jehovahs go? They go to paradise. Uh, only like 160,000 of us go to Paradise, actually. I guess you'd meet the uh, guys that flew the planes in 9-11 up there in Paradise, too, right? They go to that's, paradise? that's a different paradise. No, no, it must be the same paradise. It can't be two different paradises. Uh, we don't get I the think, 17 virgins. I think, uh, I think it's a different paradise. But hey, hey, Christina. Yeah. All right, so you're, you're rebelling your parents because you're angry at your parents for forcing you into this Jehovah crap, or what are you, what are you angry at them about? Absent dad. I don't know. I actually kind of like him. The only problem is he's been pressuring me for sex, and I didn't, I'm i kind of scared of it. So. so you haven't had sex yet? No, I've, he, I've had to give him oral, and once I gave him a lap dance, but I've tried to stray from the sex, Ooh. and I still consider myself a virgin. Oh, sure. Boy. Lap dance, a little Damn oral. Sex. It's fine. You, uh, you're good looking, are you? Um, I'm five seven. 
Um, I'm like 120 pounds, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I'm almost a C cup. Mm, that's nice. All right, listen. Uh, okay, prettier. okay. You're what? My sister's prettier. Oh, really? Well, she's yeah, coming she's... to the HFS, right? Yeah. But She'll be bringing me my uh, blood, sweat, and tears? No, she right wouldn't now? do a favor for me if I, like... All right. Look. Shoot okay. Myself. Here's the, here's the, here's the situation. Um, you you you're very rebellious. You're you're angry at your parents. You're doing whatever you can do to get a rise out of them. And guess what? You've got a rise out of them. They grounded you. Why? And uh, I'll say this to all teenagers who are sort of locking antlers with their parents from age fourteen to the time they leave the house. Why? Yeah. Why do it? Yeah. Look. Listen, if, if 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 you at 14, 15, or 16 have enough money or have the means and can take care of yourself, can grab your own apartment, can pay your own insurance, can get your own car, can pay your own meals and your gas and all that stuff, b- by all means, I would have told my stepmom to blow me and my and I would have kicked my dad right in the nuts at 15 but, and just left. But, but that age group can't experience themselves unless it's in relation to the parent. It's about the parent. That's me. But I'm you, the one rebelling. I'm the one doing right. good for. I, I'm the I, I know, bad. and no, no one ever listens to us. But just here's the deal: you got about three or four years to ride out at the homestead before you have to go off to college or move out with your jack off buddies into an apartment and live on a futon with a guy named the Wheeze. Just lay low. Don't get into it. They're gonna. They, they they are the warden. You are in their prison. You can you can rebel all you want. You can you can fl- uh, throw some uh, fecal matter at the guard when he walks by, but you're just going to get thrown in the hole. Yeah. Why do it? That's right. All right. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Yeah, it's just me and the Drewskers tonight. Drew's coming down off his sugar buzz. Drewskers? Popeye? Drewskers? Right. Oh. Drew, I never feel any different. Uh, whatever I eat doesn't affect my feeling. Does it affect your feeling no. other than a psychological thing? I'm either full or I'm hungry. Yeah. It's only it affects. I grew up around a bunch of retards. They're always like, "Oh, I'm riding the sugar high," and and and, and then they'd start figuring out rhythms for it. They go, oh, "If I eat some sugar, man, I go off like a skyrocket." But then I bottom out. Then I bottom out like a half hour later, man. I just bottom. You know, out. they've done these studies over and over and over again. Where they take kids and they have the parents feed them what they think is sugar, mm-hmm. and then they have them give a meal that they don't know is sugar, and they have to compare the differences. Have the parents report, yeah, and they 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 can't do it. Can they kind of tell which course? Sugar. Of course, and all everything. Here's here's the deal. If you're if you're depressed, you want to nap. If yeah. you feel good, you want to you want to do stuff. That's about it. There's people like I eat now. Not all meat, but red meat. <laughs> red meat. I bottom out. I bottom, I peak. I peak. I peak for about twenty minutes. Then I bottom out. Then I come up a little. But then I flatline after that. Oh, please. One rib. How many How many of the guys fighting in Iraq you think were worried about what they were eating? You know what I'm saying? That doesn't yeah. look. You, Listen, it it's just really, it's just, uh, I'm just like a Jeep. You put gas, you put kerosene, you put goats, whatever. It just, it just runs. There you go. It doesn't really matter. And all the people that buy into all that crap, they're just uh, people are into, who have a fibromyalgia and all this other other nonsense. They're just pussies. Angela? Um, yes. You're 16? Yes. What's up? Um, okay. Okay, my boyfriend, um... Well, this is, I told the lady something different, but, okay, um, like, he told me he, he has bumps on his, like, it's not on his dick, but it's, like, a little bit above, like, on his hair, and he says it's from shaving, but they don't look like bumps from shaving. They could be molluscum contagiosum, which what? is, they look kind of like zits, but they're little hard things that scrape off. Yeah, they look like kind of, yeah, like that. They're like yeah. little bubbles. Yeah, that's molluscum contagiosum, and they're, they're it's a virus, it's, it's a sexually transmitted disease. You will get it if you have sex with them, and it's uh, really yeah. women get that. Oh yeah, you don't you don't hear about it on the ladies so much. Absolutely, and absolutely uh, what? Absolutely the same. Yeah, it, they look nasty. They look like little bubbles. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe it's herpes or something. Well, right. herpes can look like little bubbles. Well, the, the bottom line is this guy needs to have this stuff looked at because he is in no position to decide what it is or is not. He and, says. 
He just says, oh, I got him from shaving. That's what he tells Angela? me. Angela? Yes. Were well, you going to believe that? Are you going to you gonna tell no. him no, no sex unless he goes yeah. to get it checked out? You know what, you know what, I, you know what I love about our callers, though? It's like, he's got these bumps. He says he got them from shaving, but I don't believe him. Uh, Angela, you got to have a doctor take a look at it because the bottom line is, is unless a doctor sees it, we're not going to be able to tell what they are. He says he got them from shaving. <laughs> Uh, yeah. What was that? Let's see if we can get it one time. He said he got him from shaving, right? Right. Well, then you don't have to have I mean, a doctor look at him. But then again, you didn't have to call us, did you? Right. But I, All yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what, what is that? You know. got the doctor going, well, he's got to have a doctor going to uh, look at him. I, I named, we named two different diseases it could be. That he's in no position to tell whether it is or is not. He doesn't know what the F it is. But maybe Angela makes a compelling point with the says he got him from shaving thing. Because maybe, I know it sounds like I'm going against my own ridicule here, but maybe he won't see the doctor because he says he got them from shaving. Right, that's what he's doing. Angela? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. So, but now now this begs question number two. How are you going to get him to see the doctor? Called Love Line. And he says it's a molluscum contagiosum or herpes simplex and... All right, we're not going to have sex unless you get that thing checked out. All right. There you go. Let's do, let's do a little role playing, Angela. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a role that's easy. Okay. It's you. The crayfish. Shut up. It's you, okay? Okay. I'm going to be your boyfriend. What's his name? Kyle? Robert. Eddie. Eddie. Okay, I'll be Eddie. Okay. Are right, you ready? Right. All right, here we go. Bring. Hello. 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 Hey, baby. Hey. Hey. Hmm? Okay. Mm. Um, you need to go to the doctor and get those bumps checked out. What are you talking about? That's just from shaving. They don't look like they're from shaving. They look pretty nasty. What are you? Who are you? That pussy Dr. Drew? Um, no, but those look nasty. Yeah, nasty to you. You barely got your GED. I got my GED. Yeah, right, buddy. You didn't even go to school. Well, so what? I still know what a shaving rash is, and I say that's a shaving rash. Now, come on over and let me sex you down. Um, you can sex me down when you find out what that is, but if it's something, then I don't think so. <laughs> Are you high? Um, no. Wow. So you, <laughs> all right. Robert Remember Byron. the whole part where you were saying you were going to you say you're going to call Love Line, Lord Byron, right and, there. There she is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, I was supposed to say to call a Love Line. No, no, no. no. Oh. You, you say. Here's the thing. This, okay. Okay. This is uh, this is this is by the way why uh, OJ went free because uh, there was, was a, a chick, chick prosecuting attorney. Yeah. Okay, Angela. Yes. You need to tell him two things. You called Loveline, and Drew said he needed to see a doctor. Yeah. yeah. You got yeah. that? Number one. Right. Number number two, no sex. Okay. All right, you ready? Re wait, repeat it back. Now, let's just try it again. Hello? Hello? Hey, baby. <laughs> come over here. Let me um, give you some sex. How about you call Loveline and talk to Dr. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Hold on, cut. Let's. Uh, Wait, I thought that's what you said. That's no, no, you were supposed to say no. You you thought that because you misunderstood me the first time around. Angela, you ever heard of the Holocaust? No. Okay, it's very good. Really, never heard of the Holocaust? Yeah, I'm serious. I've never heard of that. Okay. Hey, well, what else can we ask her? See, about? you're making me feel stupid. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. 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 The Holocaust. Uh, Why are you acting so stupid like that? You know why? Uh, you heard of Hitler, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Good. Well, was that her dog or her? That's her buddy. Okay. All right. Anyway, I don't want to do another role playing thing. Were you going to incorporate the Holocaust into it? No. No. <laughs> Too much, huh? We, we, we struck gold with that before. Just, just don't have sex with him. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny. I noticed that another thing that happens on this show. People misunderstand you at some point in the conversation. They cling to it. And they say, oh, you want him to call Loveline? And you go, no, 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 no. I want you to tell him you called Loveline and Dr. Drew said the following. And you go, okay. 
And then 10 seconds later, they go, all right, I'll tell them to call Love Line. And it's like, oh, that was your idea. Remember? We, we, never, we never said that. It, it's sort of, uh, mm. sort of like when uh, Bugs Bunny got uh, Daffy Duck to yes, uh, tell Wabbit Elmer season. Fudd, <laughs> in, shoot me now. Yeah, that's right. Alan? Yeah. You're 19? Yeah. What's up? Um, just wanted to say, uh, I've been trying to call you guys for about a year now, and every time I do, I say, yeah, my name's Alan, and I can't take your call. Mm. But um, I'm 19, I've been in a relationship. Hold on, hold on. Every time you get through, you say your name, and they say, we can't take your call? Pretty much. Why are you on now? A uh, different person answered. <laughs> and you, same people are sitting there. Same people sitting there have been there for the last year. Yeah, I, I, always, get the, I always get a girl, but this time I got a guy. Oh, well, it's kind of coming but, um, into focus now. I'm a bitch. All right, go ahead. <laughs> All right, um, I'm 19. I've been in a relationship with a girl for three years. Uh, we're engaged to be married right now, and uh, we're living together. Um, I've had experiences with uh, bi bisexual experiences in my life, but I'm not really attracted to men, but I am attracted to, like, um, like hermaphrodites and uh, transvestites, and I just wanted to know... What what could be causing that? Could that be because one of my first sexual experiences was with a guy, or yeah, that the, you, hmm. you were probably like eight years old or something, right? I was about yeah, I was about like nine or ten. How about, many about uh, look kudos for picking that? Yeah, yeah, come yeah. on. And then that this scrambles the wiring that's developing in your brain in terms of the sort of trajectory of sexual orientation. It, it makes it sort of confused and that sort of. An arousal pattern develops that Hold what's on. supposed to have been there. How do you get into hermaphrodites? Where where do you find them these days? Well, um, I, I, of, I read a lot of Japanese anime and stuff like that, and then in Japan, it's kind of a big thing over there. It's like, you know, their gods are hermaphrodites, and it's kind of a very big sexual thing. Ooh. Um, I, uh, I don't know. I just kind of always liked that since I, since I was about 11 or 12. Hold I kinda... on a second. Calling all nerds. Mm. That's super nerd. When you start getting into that uh, Japanese animation... Well, he's masturbating to it. And when you start beating off to drawings and you're not in prison, <laughs> that is super nerddom right there. And you're not even beating off to the physical form. You're beating off to the craftsmanship of the drawing. No, he, he, I'm, I'm he, convinced. No, he likes the uh, multisexual being. <clears throat> Alan? Yeah. Wow. Well, the, the fantasy well, is what he's beating off to. With with the with the drawings, but I mean, I started looking at you mm -hmm. know real real like shemales and transvestites and. All right, well, be that as it may, you, you've got some some wiring issues, some some uh, you know confusion about what? your sexual identity. What do you do for I, a living? I some some with computers. Don't feel like I'm yeah. gay, you don't feel like you're what? I don't feel like I'm uh, like I'm a homosexual. I just no. Because I, I definitely am very attracted to women. Also, yeah, you just sort of you, they got to have a male genitalia. Yeah, hey, right. Beat, that's, beats that's, off to Johnny Sacco. It's not gay. Are you afraid of female genitalia? Do they evoke anxiety or anything? No. Well, previously to this girl, yes, because I had some bad experiences with with vaginas. Nice, uh, right, not so nice vaginas, but mm. in this. With what this did they attack, or what? What the vaginas do to you? <laughs> well, okay. When I was when I was thirteen years old, um, one of the first girls I had a sexual experience with tied me to the bed and got me naked, and I was under the impression we we're going to have sex. Instead of having sex with me, she um, pretty much first she mashed her vagina in my face, and then she left the room and came back with everybody else who lived in her apartment, and they all took pictures of me and laughed at me and humiliated me, and she on me. So perfectly normal, perfectly <laughs> healthy. Yeah. What, what, while the neighborhood watched, she peed on you. Well, just the people. She lived in a, an apartment with like she had roommates, and they all came in the room and watched and watched her pee on you. Right. And, where where did yeah. you meet this person? This is getting more interesting all the time. At, at, at Debbie Town, Paul. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I can say it on the air, but I met her at Denny's restaurant. I think you can say that. Why not? And uh, was she much older than you? Yeah, she was like 20, 23 or 24. So she was, it was, wow. a, it was a criminal act then. Uh, technically, yes. Yeah. yeah. Technically. If it was also, done to a, uh, listen, if it was a 22 year old guy doing it to a 13 year old girl, oh my God. it'd be a criminal act. This is just a serious goof on. <laughs> You know what no, I mean? No, I mean, I, yeah, it was definitely not cool of her. She took advantage of me, I feel, but, like... Was she good-looking? She was okay. She wasn't, you know... She, she wasn't, wasn't ultra-supermodel hot? Right, she was just okay, and I, and I found out you know, later... You, uh, most, where, did, where did she pee on you? Your chest, face, groin? 
kind of just everywhere. I'm mostly on my face. And my and, and and she sort of got and kind of straddled you? you. She kind of yeah, like stood up on the bed over me. And it was her bed, right? Yeah. So she just kind of whizzed all over her bed. Yeah, pretty much. And, and pardon me for laughing, but no, no. I mean, I, I, I can laugh. At it, but I don't. I don't hold resentment toward it anymore. No, no, no. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> but I don't know if, um, yeah. the, in reference to the, the the transvestite thing, could the could the utter absence of a of a mother and any female presence in my life and my high, entire life have anything yes. to do with that? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I don't. A lot of stuff. In, in summary, a lot of stuff to go on. Abandonment, yeah. abuse, okay. the trifecta. Here's what and, you need: and the, uh, some nutball peeing on you. You ready? Yeah. Uh, you need a therapist, and she needs to be a female therapist. Female therapist. Female therapist, and, and do not get married for a little while. You're 19, oh for Christ's sake. Yes. And listen, the, that has to be a therapist you're sort of not attracted to and you don't like. You know what I mean? Because if, if it's somebody that he really finds, oh, this, oh, this person fits with me, eh, not good. Mm. Not good. Mm. Just somebody who knows what they're doing is what you need to be with. Mm. Right. Yeah, let's ask uh, real quick, real quick. Kim? Hi. Uh, you were listening to the show last night when I was saying I haven't let a good fart go in about three months. Yeah. It's breaking my heart. I know. And I've been eating anything and everything. I have, No smell has, has come well, forth I, from I, my I, ass I like in Kim, months. I like Kim's empathy, too. It's like, I know, Adam. That's, I know. That's, it's that's rough. And especially, as, especially when you used to be on top. You, you know what I mean? People respected you. They looked up to you. Man, now you're a pushover. It's nothing. I got nothing. I'm a paper lion. Okay, well, I got something that'll work. All right, this sure. better be good. It is. Okay. I know it works because it. Uh, I I got chewed out by my mom last night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. I'm um, sugarless candy. Hmm. What? Yeah, my dad's a diabetic. The sorbitol, why... the sorbitol candy. Um, I don't know. I bought it at a candy store, and it's just it was a a peanut butter cup. Mm. Yeah. And uh, something with nuts in it. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy enough to work. But if I go down and find some dietetic candy and take it and, and a poof of air comes out of my <laughs> ass with no scent attached to it, I'm going to come looking for you, so, Ken. There, there's a lot of scent. <laughs> really? Yeah. All right. That, that was you? freaking out and told me not. I can't buy him that anymore. What are you oh, doing? Oh, he's had the action. Yeah. Oh, no, he... no, 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 no. 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 Why it's something no? else. It's something else. Yeah, but a peanut butter cup with no sugar in it's nah. not going to give me anything no, good. No. Pasta fazool. Well, nah. That's, that's Jimmy's dish. Yeah. Hmm. I got to get a good gas dish. Please call in if you know a good gas dish. You have to experiment. Everybody's different. I'm, I'm trying everything. I'm getting nothing. No. Nothing. Right. We'll take a break. We'll be back. Hey, everybody, Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Just me and my partner tonight. Drew uh, picked a call that uh, has no question on it. Hello? Yes. What's your name, sir? Robert. Robert. Do you have a suggestion for me to get gas? I do. I've got a. Uh, every, l- every day at lunch, I go to Trader Joe's and get the hummus. <laughs> hummus? Mm-hmm. What's that? Hummus good for gas? Uh, the garlic is great. The spicy hot hummus is even better. Get that good uh, kind of burn your eyes thing Ooh. going. Mm-hmm. But I stick by the eggplant. It's always got that nice kind of you know. It's got right in the middle where it doesn't burn your ass, but it still offends everybody. Mm-hmm. What do you what do you what do you put it on? What do you put on a playing card? Uh, just crackers, whatever they got there. See, Robert, you're you're prone to gas though. Oh, what's that? You're prone to gas. You create a great methane production, right? Uh, only with certain foods, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, but your Adam Adam is disinclined to gas. Nothing, nothing I'm that we so, can find. I'm so lazy, my body won't even work up a good fart. Yeah, hey, Drew. Uh. Drew, you eat what? What's your thing? Garlic uh. or onion? Ah, uh, green onion. And now, what if I gave you a clove of garlic right now, of raw garlic, yeah. and you just swallowed it? That'd be bad times. Just you'd be blasting <laughs> all the way home. You think you could move yourself in the chair with the wheels? <laughs> <laughs> Without touching the ground, yeah, I think I think the next be like space sit, shuttle sitting on, <laughs> sitting on a chair and f- doing the fire extinguisher thing. We just fire the fire extinguisher and roll across the room. Really, I mean, you, yeah. you could you could give yourself gas immediately, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, with a variety of different mm. foods, and it wouldn't take much of quantity Over, wise. Overeating does to me too, coincidentally. Uh oh, yeah, it could be bad tonight. Now, what is it? You have different different enzymes in you. I have different bacteria. 
different bacteria mm-hmm. in you. And that bacteria, that you, the particular bacteria that is uh, common colon, to your colon, lives my colon, turns turns mm-hmm. this food into gas, cracks it into methane. Right. Whereas mine does not seem to do that. No. Okay. Yeah, I'm lucky. Well, back to the point. All right. Katie. Hello. You're 15. Yeah. What's up? Oh hi. Oh, first I have to compliment you. I love you guys so much. And Thank I've you. I've been listening to Loveline like every day since I was 12. Mm. And yeah, Dr. Jew. Mm-hmm. You're very smart. You're one of the smartest people on radio, mm. and you should be president. Yeah. Yeah. And Adam, I love you. You're gorgeous, and I yeah. love the man show and Crank Anchors. Thanks, baby doll. Yeah. Okay. So, um, for mm. enough my- of that. I uh, buttered you guys up. What do you need? Okay. Um, for my debate class, we're debating. I'm debating that um, condoms should be distributed to high schools. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to ask both of you the pros and cons of that, and how effective right. condoms are, and like yeah. Well, like distrib- do you, oh. you mean distributed in what way? Like just passed out at school, so like they're available to students who need them. Well, there's sort of a difference between passing something out and making it accessible to people who mm-hmm. need it or want it. I agree with that. Uh huh. Hey, I I don't think that we should um, load up a. Uh, one of those uh, firefighting tanker planes and drop condoms over the over the school, <laughs> but, well, but I think I think we do agree that they they could have them in the health office well, answer, and they could the obtain question, them. Answer, answer the question: Why not, though? Why shouldn't you do that? I I just I I just think it, it may not bode with some people's sensibilities, and those people you should respect those people. And does it encourage kids to have sex? To no. Have no. It doesn't because I was talking to my mom today and she was saying, oh, it's wrong. It's going to make people want to have sex. And Well, listen, th- there, every 15 and 16 and 17-year-old boy at that school would like to have sex except for the handful of guys who don't. Yeah. But the condom, I mean, l- let's look at it this way. Let's, let's look at it this way. You can use this in your debate class. Thank you. Tell me you thought of it. Uh, <laughs> you, take, you take 10 boys 10 average teenage boys mm-hmm. 16 year old boys eight of them really are going to want to have sex and mm-hmm. two of them for religious purposes or maybe they're gross a little they're mm-hmm. a little behind or whatever yeah. aren't that's yeah. about right right yeah. those eight boys who really want to have sex the condom it doesn't change things at all no it's like saying the guy's really hungry and you give him a, you give him a fork yeah it doesn't really matter he'll eat the chicken with his hands he doesn't need the fork you give him the fork he'll use the fork that's right it's not going to stop him or start him. It's not going to remind him to eat. It says, here's a fork. Yeah, well, I'm hungry anyway. It's not going to do anything. And if a guy doesn't want to eat, the fork's not going to make him eat. He'll put it down. Yeah. That's right. So you don't need the condom to fork. Right. <laughs> there you go. All right. And the, the uh, condoms work very, very well. Um, how yeah. accurate are they? Because my mom's like, oh, it's still like... You're still, it's still bad and still not going to work and it's not 100%. Your mom's doing a little spin control here. Your, your mom should just tell you that the semen's fattening. That, that's the, 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 right. the spin I'm going to take. But, yeah, they're like in the 90-something. Oh, yeah. They're very, if they're used properly, they're very effective. And they're, they're a good barrier to reduce the risk of sexually transmitted diseases. They really are. So I, I, I however, don't believe that necessarily um, government institutions should be passing things. I think the private sector really should be stepping up a lot more and that high schools shouldn't get in the way of that. Yeah. In other words, I don't think that, I don't think something that your tax dollars go to should be distributing condoms because people have all kinds of feelings and they want to be represented and it would just create chaos. Yeah. On the other hand, a private sector can is much more efficient, much more better, much more able to problem solve, should make these things available to you and the high schools shouldn't get in the way of that. But on the other hand, if I have a choice of where my tax dollars are going, which is uh you know, eighty cents for a condom or life of uh, tax being taxed for a welfare child and, and prison cells. In prison cells, I'm going with the condom. Justine, hello. You're twenty. Yes, I'm twenty. Your dad asked uh, you to uh, to buy a banana a suppository. What? No. What happened is um, I'm staying with my friend for a week, and we're going to the store. And he's like, hey, hold on. I need you guys to pick me up stuff. And I was like, hey, what do you need? He's like, I need a banana, I need preparation H, and suppositories. No. I'm serious. I am not joking. Well, he was joking. No, he was not joking. We confronted him on the issue, and he got really mad. (laughs) All right, wait a minute. (laughs) Where was he when you guys were going into the store? 
No, we uh, we were leaving the house. We're like, hey, bye. We're going to go to the store. And he's All like, right. hold on. You need to get- right. I'm asking where he was. He was at home. Yeah, he was at home. And he said, as long as you're going to the store, uh-huh. you need to pick me up a, b- a banana, not not a bunch of bananas. Just a banana. A banana, some preparation is your process. Oh, please. Yeah. No, I'm not joking. Of course you're joking. Well, you may not be joking, but he was. Here's, here, here I'll, g- I'll give you... I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you two choices. Okay. Okay. Either you're joking, uh-uh. or he's joking and you're stupid. Which one? No, it's actually neither. I was asking my friend about it, and it's because he had that surgery, which makes your stomach smaller, and he hasn't been sticking to the diet, so his stomach's been really bad. So I guess he's been having diarrhea, diarrhea really badly. Yeah. So- I guess that's why he needed the Preparation H suppositories, and he just has a breakfast every, uh, a banana with his breakfast every morning for his shake that he's supposed to have. All right, well. I just thought it was really funny, the order in which these things were asked for. All right. Don't call again. And we'll be right back. Well, all right, but listen, I, uh, I stand corrected then. Yeah. He had the, uh, he had the uh, stomach tightening surgery or the, uh, Gastric bypass, you ate that? All right, it's just a uh, crazy coincidence. Yeah, whatever. We'll be back. Hey, everybody, Love Line. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. It's close to driving trail, my brother. Don't do it, man. Woo, I'll do it. He'll do it. I know he'll do it. I'm don't, a man, man. Don't tempt him. No, man. I always like that part where the guy's partner explains what a madman he is. Yeah. Oh. You don't know this guy. The nudge will do it, man. He's a wild man. He's wild. You know I'm wild. He'll do it. The nudge. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Joanna? <clears throat> yes. You're, uh, you're 19? Yes, I'm 19. <clears throat> What's up? Um, I had a question. Me and my boyfriend have been together for three and a half years, and um, we've tried a lot of different things, and um, he wanted to try um, anal sex. How old is he? Um, he's 18. Ooh. And he wanted to try anal sex, and we've tried it twice, but I seem to not be able to get, like, comfortable, and it's really painful. Yeah, so why don't you just stop? Yeah, that's what we do, exactly. He sees that it hurts me, and yeah, right. as soon as well. he sees that, he's like, okay, this isn't a turn-on anymore, you know? This isn't working, but I do want to try it, and I do, you know... Also Is there any equivalent it. for the male Excuse that, me? that a woman asks a guy to do? Oh, well, that's the entire relationship. It's like going to the opera? That's everything yeah. in the relationship other than the sex. It's I the see. part where they have to hang out. That's basically, you know what that is? That's going to one of her goofy friend's weddings. <laughs> Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's uh-huh. what anal is. It's a nice, yeah. slow, five-hour anal <laughs> encounter. Yeah. One of those crappy weddings. <laughs> you know, and I get to, I always get that, be nice. You must have been to some lately. Be what nice. What happened? Yeah, I've been to them. I, I get to be nice all the time, and then there's always this one, too. You make sure and talk to Charlene's boyfriend. You know, it's always bad. It's it, 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 You know, actually, it's one of the signs you're not the world's greatest person when you get that whole laundry list of things you got to do. Yeah. Every time I go anywhere with my wife, like, here's, here's, here's what it sounds like on the way. Just, don't leave me alone with Drew's wife. Don't leave me alone with her. I don't want... You be nice. You be nice. You talk to Suzanne. You t- talk to Carlos. You talk to Suzanne's husband. Do not ignore him. He's a huge fan of yours. Do He's been not, waiting to meet you. Do not leave me. Do 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 not take a um, rusty shiv and put it in my father's <laughs> neck. Okay. You talk to my father. Talk to him. You gotta. You know that's yeah, I, my yeah. my entire life. Here's my entire life. People explain to me how to be a human being. Yeah. My dad, it's a little bit of a reach for you. My dad gave you that NRA video. Now you call him up and you mm-hmm. thank him. And I'm like, <laughs> mm-hmm. Drew, do you get that? Did your, did your no. wife explain you how to no. be a human being? No. Oh, please. No. She tells you everything else. She has to explain. She doesn't give any of that? No. She, Don't leave me with your mother. No. You be nice to the. No? No, no. No, because no. you're so busy just kissing ass. No one ever has to give you that speech. <laughs> Is that, is that what it is? Yep, it's basically it. Joanna. All right. So uh, anyway, he doesn't he, he doesn't want to hurt you. You don't like anal sex. 
You want to know how to have anal sex? Yeah. yeah, well, I want to be able to like it. You I mean, may it's not be. You I'm may going to try. Yeah, well, maybe. You've tried maybe. it twice. You tried it, and that may not yeah. be for you. you well, may not. Uh, okay. well we, here, here's my tips. Uh, lube and booze. Okay. All right. You got okay. it? All right, I see. Well, I mean, uh, Ted, use lots of lube. I have a glass of red wine. See if it loosens you up a little bit. Okay, so that's probably is it's probably me being nervous or sort of no, tense or... no, well, it, no. It, well, it's it's moot because whatever it is, you're not into it. Whether whether it hurts because you're tense or it hurts uh-huh. because you have an exceptionally small rectum. Whatever it is, it is not going to feel good to you. Just not. God bless her. That's so wild. What I mean, I I I don't know. And and then let's just say. On uh, on anal trip number three, it's the third trip down the. Uh, you pack up the balls and penis. You head down the Hershey Highway. The third one, it somehow magically works. Now where are you? You, you know what I mean. He's got an alien in the ass every time right, now. Still something you don't enjoy. Theoretically, yeah. yeah. It's all right not to enjoy something your uh, boyfriend. And by the way, no one's going to fault you. You gave it a shot. You have the old college try. I just don't understand this continued desire to put herself into situations that hurt her, blaming well, herself, she says feeling she, faulty she that likes, something's wrong with her. Uh, that she, her, she's her, not saying that. She her just, rectum tearing is oh, uncomfortable true. for her. She likes the guy. She wants to make him happy. Oh, my God. What is that? You you talk to Suzanne's, but talk to them. Joe. Joe? Joe. Yes. Yeah. What's up? Oh, yeah. Hey, uh... I'm still bogus. writing down uh, lube and booze here. Let me catch up with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. This close to dropping trap. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it too, right, Drew? No, you, you will. Don't don't tempt him, Joe. He's no. a madman. <laughs> okay, here's my question. Mm-hmm. Uh, one night, the wife's punani, as she refers to it, <laughs> the afternoon, made a, a funny noise, you know, farting sound. <laughs> and uh, my question was, uh, you know... Does that necessarily... The only time I've ever heard it was after long, hard, passionate sex. So my question is, uh, I guess it's really for the doc, is, uh, you know, what are the reasons that that may happen? Well, she's cheating, obviously. When cheating. Yeah. you got to smell that wind that comes out of her. If it smells like a different dude, man, you got to kick that bitch to the curb. Oh, who cares? It's just, so you really it's, need to it, know. No, it's nothing. It's just the position you're in. That's all. Well, Drew, can uh, you ever you ever make some women can make that noise without sex? Yep, some women and some women make it all the time. But most you get them in the right position and they will start. Yeah. Hey, Drew. It's a piston. What? What's a piston? That's the action that pushes piston the air. Action. In, yeah. yeah, but what what if you you've had no sex? I think uh, Joe was saying there was no sex before this. Oh, no, I thought you said it was during sex. Well, I don't know, Joe. It was at our very start of sex. Yeah. Oh, all right. Listen, it, you take your hand, you put it under your bare armpit, you start flapping your arm. You get a little better sound when it works up a sweat, but you can still pop one off at the beginning, can't you? <laughs> Jack off. Mm. Hey, screwball phone screeners. I know we're tired of uh, girls who are raped on their, on their third birthday, but... That wasn't a question Joe had. How does how does it make how do I get a queef sound out of it? It's usually pump number three hundred and twenty seven, but this was pump number fourteen. How is that physically possible? This is a question. Hey Drew. Yeah. No, no. Oh. 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 Woo. Alex? Hi. You're seventeen, what's up? Well, I had a whole Knee operations when I was younger, 14 to 15. Oh, what and kind? Knee operations. Knee operations. For what? Yeah, I had my knees stapled because I grew too fast. Hmm. All right. How do they I staple them? Stapled. And so... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, How do you... St- of- whoa, whoa, whoa. How do you staple your knees? They gr- they staple the growth plates on the inside of the knees, so I stopped growing. Really? Wow, I've never heard of that. Yeah. How tall are you now? 6'8". Hmm. And if they didn't staple the growth plates on your knees, what do you think you'd be? Um, I'd probably be about 6'4", because my legs would be bowed out to each side, and I'd be dislocating my knees every time I took a step. Oh, wow. Interesting. If they didn't stop that. Hmm. Nope. Well, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Were, Were your legs growing faster than the rest of your body? 
my legs, the growth plates on the outside of the knee were growing faster than on the inside, so uh, my legs bowed out. Okay. Wow. I was, I was knock kneed okay. really badly. All oh. right. Yeah. But, so I had a lot of pain medicine. I got addicted to Vicodin. Oh, boy. And so and I finally got off of it after, like, I just stopped it. Mm-hmm. But my question was, if am I more susceptible to other drug addictions after because I've been addicted to Vicodin? Is there alcoholism in your family? Um, no. Did you get addicted or just get dependent on it? Um, I don't know. When I stopped taking it, I stayed up for like five nights straight. But you just Sick. stopped. You just kicked it yourself. Yeah. All right. I, yeah. I don't. And I don't think, I'm not sure that's addiction. Yeah, ha- having so. withdrawal does not addiction make. Okay. Anybody who takes opiate long enough will have a withdrawal. But the addict, when they put the opiate down, is changed. They okay. Still, they still feel like they've got to pursue it. They feel sort of that they can't regulate their feelings. They preoccupy about it. And they get back and they use something. And then eventually they get back to the opiates. Listen, Stretch, you're fine. Okay. People uh, call you Stretch? Yeah, and <laughs> Ogre and Lurch and Ogre. Shrek. Can you play sports or anything? No. Nope. Your knees aren't good enough for that? No. How how uh, how much do you weigh? Uh, 225. 225? Yeah. 6'8"? That's, that's about, that's slender, right? It's about... Yeah. Where would you decent, be? right? Yeah. Any problems? You all right? You, what do they think? You're 17. They think you're going to make it to seven foot? I certainly hope not. Really? It's already hard in my clothes. It's already do, what? Do, do you play basketball? No. No, he doesn't play any sports. No sports. No sports. Music. Music, not sports. All right. All right. Well, good times. And, and do you? can you run? Can you? Your knees okay? Yeah, I'm uh, pretty good. Okay. All good right. Around. All right, good times. No sports. <clears throat> Once in a while, you get these uh, tall guys that don't do anything with their height. And everyone, <laughs> they spend their whole life telling people they don't do st- play basketball, and everyone seems disappointed. Hmm. It's like, oh, you had this incredible gift, the, this gift of height. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you something. Uh, no, one, uh, no one sheds any tears for tall guys in this society. Being tall, being tall like as you get over 6'2", kind of tall, mm-hmm. it sucks. Go go fly. I'm six two. Try to fly coach at six two. Mm. That's uncomfortable. I I can only imagine being six seven, six nine, and stuffing my spindly ass into one of those coach seats. You know, yeah. Cars. You know, every, here's the deal. Everything, whether it's clothes, cars. You know, as far as how far the seat goes back, uh, the coach. It, at tables. When when you go out to eat, when you go sit at a movie theater, Nothing whatever it is. Okay. Here's the deal. Ideally. At your, it, it is made for guys who are about five ten. Uh, yeah, guys five eight is going to be more comfortable. Guys six foot is going to be a little less comfortable. But as you as you start going over six foot, go yeah. to a movie theater. Yeah, have your knees pressed up against the guy's seat in front of you the entire time. What is the big advantage to that? And how come no one ever says anything? I mean, listen, you're, if you're a guy and you're five two, it sucks. But every flight's first class, yeah. and every time you go to a movie theater, you, your feet ain't touching the ground. You know that that problem with your knees jammed up against stuff all the time. You're right. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> Drew did like a four stage yawn into the mic. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Andy. Hey, what's up, Adam? Hey, brada. Dude, mm-hmm. you're 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 a genius. And Doctor Drew, Drew, you're a genius. Oh, how about that? Oh, now no one's a genius. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, anyways, I got a, I got three things. All mm-hmm. right. One question is about my balls. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few months ago, I was sitting on this bench after school, and this chick comes over to give me a hug, and she puts, like, all the weight in her knee and, like, gets right on my ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, Did you speak up, say something? Wait, what? Did you say something to oh, her? Oh, yeah, I, like, pushed her off. All right. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just felt like my ball was, like, shifting. All right, good times. Yeah, and now my ball just doesn't hang the right way. Well. So mm-hmm. I was just wondering... Shifting is quite a graphic depiction. What does that no, mean? No. Like, sh- no, like, like shells could, are shifting. Migrating. Here, let me tell you. Like, I could feel it. Like, you know the the tube where your jizz, like, comes out of your balls? Your jizz uh, out of your balls. Yeah, your like, jizz tube. Yeah. Yeah, yeah know it. Tube. Know it. Like, it felt like that was, like, moving around my ball. Uh-huh. Like it twisted in some way. Yeah. Uh-huh. Suppose oh, that's it felt possible. so bad. It was, like, yeah. the worst pain. All right. All right. So, anyways, I was just wondering what's up with that. 
Um, not sure. The only way you really know is if you had an ultrasound to see if anything happened. It, it's really not hanging right now. If well, really, well, yeah, like sometimes when it's like cold and you know my balls like shrivel up. Yeah, yeah. The one hangs all normal, but the other one's kind of a. Well, wait a minute. How do they hang all normal when it's well, shriveled well, like up? One sad. Straight. They're straight. You know, like they just hang straight down. Yeah. Hold like, on a second, Drew. I have not gotten that thick uh, sort of. Uh, you know that uh, go- tunic, gopher's brain. Yeah, that's the dark sort of, uh, tunic under your door kind of yeah. look. Yeah, I used to like that yeah. when I was a kid. <laughs> Ladies, you don't know this, but your nutsack goes from like a crown royal sack into a super ball. No, not even at, that. At like an acorn. Well, I mean, it could really shrink up. No, it doesn't go to an acorn. You well, retard. not the balls, but the whole the whole. The, the, the point is, is it gets thick and it gets it it, it starts. It looks like a brain. Yeah. Okay, what happened to that, Drew? That doesn't happen to me anymore. Well, gravity is taking its toll. I can't get I can't get any nut suckage at all. Well, you can get some, but it won't suck all the way back up the way you. No, used to. I can't. I mean, the skin is perpetually thin. Well, you've done it. You've stretched out the cremasteric muscles. The the, the gravity is just. Just taking it apart. I need to have those rejuvenated, Drew, so I can enjoy my youthful sack again. Yes, a ball tuck? I would like a ball tuck, yes. Mm. Who, are we, who are we talking to? Anthony? Uh, yeah. Uh, no. Is that who we're talking to? Oh, Andy. Andy? All right. All right, yo, so we're... maybe, yo, you may have to go to the doctor, yo. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, let me just finish. When you get a trauma like that, you're testing, the most thing, common thing to change its shape and configuration would be a... Um, Spermatocel or cystocele, varicocele, mm-hmm. a cyst, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let him ask the other two questions. And now, yeah. he had two more questions. Two more. Uh, Andy, Dude, real quick. All right, go All ahead. Right. Uh, it's it's one about your gas thing. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, there's these things that I could buy at my school. They're like from uh, thank God it's Friday restaurants. Mm-hmm. They're called potato skins. Mm-hmm. Uh, they sell. <laughs> Appetizers from TGIF at your school? Yeah, they're pretty sweet too. They oh taste God. really good, and what? they make you crap about the same time every day. What? The, hold on a second. What kind of school do you 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 go to school in Reseda? Yeah. What school do you go to? Uh, Cleveland High. You go to Cleveland High, and it's it's catered by the that TGI Fridays out there in Reseda. Yeah. Holy f! <laughs> you know I ate what the. When I was in high school, we had like these uh, crappy generic sweet rolls. When there was everything was generic. The hot dogs were like green and beige color. Every, was, the everything burger was, patties were boiled. Corn. There was corn. It and was a just, strange but, rice. Just corn it was just nothing everything but boiled. Everything boiled. sucked. The hamburgers. How do you half up a hamburger so badly? Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? You go to McDonald's for thirty nine cents, you get a decent burger. LA Unified had these burgers that were like kind of boiled and kind of milky tasting, and sort of gray and a little like gray colored meat that looked like it was cooked in some fashion. That was a strange smell. Always a strange what the, smell. What the, what the, I'm going to sue everybody. So what what happens? You get you get catered. What else can you get over there from TGI Friday? Uh, I don't know. They have a different type. Like they have jalapeno, whatever. Like a different flavor. You go to the cafeteria and get like uh, you can get like buffalo chicken wings and stuff. Well, yeah, but they're all fake, you know, and those those make you crap pretty bad too. But uh, hmm. we could also get like uh, Pizza Hut, huh. and then, like, <laughs> Subway. Jeez, it's like going to a ball game. And then uh, they, they also got these ice creams. They're so goddamn good. They're they're like all fifty right. cents. All right, listen, I'm getting hungry now. I could remember. I'm not. If, if some kid, here's the whole thing. When I went to school. The schools basically, L.A. Unified schools are like a prison when I grew up. They're, same architectures, black top everywhere, mm-hmm. high fences everywhere. Once you came on to campus, you could not leave the campus. You could try to make it over the fence, but a guard might take you down. And the first shot would be a warning shot, but the second one, they'd go for the kill. The, the Everything was sort of squared off, institutional, institutionalized looking. All the buildings were like gray and, and green, and every window had that sort of heavy-duty chain-link mesh over it. Mm-hmm. It's not the chain-link fence. It's that heavy-duty grate kind of, hey, you can't throw a rock through it or yeah. something kind of yeah. thing. And everything was real heavy-duty. It was, it was a, like institution. And if anybody ever had any food in that school that it was something you'd heard of from the outside world... It was huge. 
for one reason or another, some guy would show up with a Taco Bell burrito or a McDonald's hamburger once every two years, and it was like the oh, no, oh my god! Oh, it was like you were the guy in prison with a sack of heroin and a carton of cigarettes, you know. Yeah. And every uh, and all the food was just horrible, generic, boiled prison food, essentially. What is this? Kids with their goddamn TGI burgers, Anthony. Hey. I, I say uh, uh, my word to this. My word? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, well, um, I gotta, first, I need to say that, Dr. Drew, you made me want to become a psychologist because of everything you guys have done on here. All right. And uh, Say thank you, thank Dick. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Adam. Well, I'm not a psychologist. Well, I, yeah, I know it's a little confusing, but you, yeah. But the way that you analyze people and, like, how they, how they think and everything has made me want to do that. Okay, great. Excellent. Yeah, and, uh, Adam, yeah. You're, uh, you're saying bouncy, bouncy. I have this uh, water bottle that's like a nail gene bottle, and I dropped it one time, and it bounces, and now all my friends, every time they see me, they keep on going bouncy, bouncy. Bouncy, yeah. bouncy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's, that's not, not me. That's not Adam, yeah. yeah Hold yeah. on. <laughs> now I'm pissed at Anthony. You're 0 for 2, buddy. Okay, now here's my question. All right. Um, my, I, I went out with my um, my girlfriend uh, originally in December. Went out for a month and a half, two months, and we stopped going out and everything. And it's it goes off and on. And she was over over came over to my house after school this Tuesday afternoon, and we dropped our stuff up at my house and went down to the beach and. Her mom has bipolar and changed her mind what time she had to be home. And when she called at 6, um, her mom got mad at her and said she she was supposed to call at 4.30 and everything. And now her mom thinks that because she couldn't get a hold of either of us is that we were having sex. And were you? No. No, we weren't. Anthony's a virgin. No, yes. Yeah, yes, I am. I am proud to say that, <laughs> but I, I, decided, I decided that... I'm not going to screw up my life until I am, until that time I have made that choice where I'm going to I'm going to sit down and start a family. Yeah. Yeah. And all right, parents, sounds like good rationale for not yeah, getting laid to me. And her yeah. and her parents have for told her you cannot see him, you cannot talk to him, you can't you can't even really. Him. Well, can't <laughs> and and they don't believe her when she no, tells. No, because them? they um because I don't know why they don't believe. Okay, believe her wait a second. So. What is what has she said to you then that you have to break it off? Uh, no, it's because we're we're in the period of not we're not going out right now, but we're in the we're almost going back out because she said she wanted to go back out with me again. Hold on a second, let me talk to Drew. What was that, Anthony? Well, first off, a lot, a lot of talking, the, the, sound, a lot of rationalization. The, the sound of a virgin is the most distinct sound there is on this radio show. Yes. Even if it, it speaks louder to me than a junior college student. Well, there's there's a couple things. There's the baby voice. There's the junior college. Yeah. There's the forklift. But the virgin And thing. then there's the virgin. Yeah. Now, he's 17. He says he has a girlfriend. He says they went to the beach. You'd, you'd think, you know, most guys are 17. Uh, virgin, you know the voice. Okay. I'm not so sure that this guy actually does have a girlfriend. Right. Uh, I'm not so sure what they were. We'd have to ask her. Yeah, An and, and Anthony, Anthony's not a guy who's who's grounded in reality. Right. Anthony? Yeah? But not a stupid man. No. Anthony? Yeah? What's the furthest you've gotten with this young lady? Almost a home plate. Really? Almost. Bouncy, bouncy. Almost a, yeah, almost a home plate. Home, almost home plate. What yeah, is, what is like, that? Yeah, I'm about to slide, but... You guys were both naked? Uh, pretty much. Oh. But we didn't do that stuff because we decided that we're not going to have sex because we don't, right. we don't want to screw and you each go, other you up. Go out and what, what, you have oral sex? Yeah. And you go yeah. out regularly with her? Uh, not regularly. How long has it been since you went out with her? It's been about a month and a half. Were you oh. going out regularly? <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. yeah, we were going out regularly, yeah. regularly for like two months, mm -hmm. and then it, there was something happening at her home, and she would have to like break it up because of stress. And everything. <laughs> That's a stress. Well, it's like her family is like Anthony. Really weird. Okay, listen, listen to Papa Ace. Okay. Uh, this is not your girlfriend. Yeah. You may have had a few dates with her, and uh -huh. maybe almost gotten a home base with her, home plate. But you didn't. She's not your girlfriend. It's time to move on. Well, I yes. Didn't, I 
I didn't actually say she was my girlfriend. We right. were going off and on. Okay, for a do while. not examine the past any longer. Move okay. on. Move yeah. on. Okay, but it, it's just that, um, that I don't. No. Move. No. Move on. He's it, just still oh. dancing, 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 dancing. It's been a month. And, and by the way, when you're 17. And you uh, listen when you're when you're 29 and you haven't seen somebody in a month and a half. It's it's, it's, it's like done a, like a whole sports season nearly. But well, when yeah, you're football. seven when you're 17, it's football season, you're done. Yeah. yeah, I mean, month and a half, you're done. And it didn't sound there was like there's a lot. And Anthony's again not in reality. Too no, much. no, smart guy. Yeah, too smart. Yeah, just rationalizing, thinking, dancing, right? Constantly. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be back. Line, I'm Adam. That's Drew. I like this song. Who is this? This is the uh, All American Rejects. Oh yeah. But now I'm starting to realize why I like this song. Well, I like this song, but it sounds like Better and Ezra. Yeah, remember yeah. Better and Ezra? Oh sure. Yeah, I like this <gasps> guy. <laughs> Where are those Better and Ezra guys? Right. <gasps> Hey, how's it going? Uh, first off, I'd like to say, uh, Adam, I think you're the funniest guy in the world. Thanks. And, uh, love to grow up to be just like you. Uh, but uh, I do have a couple things real quick. One thing, I know the perfect thing for gas. Hmm. kind of plagued me all through high school. Hmm. Eat a grapefruit for breakfast. No. That's, that's got to be the least gaseous food in the world, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. I uh, used to have to try and do it around the teacher whenever she walked by in a fourth hour of my freshman year so I could blame it on her. You did a... Uh Picking the teacher to blame for the fart is probably not a great strategy. It's always best to blame it on a fat kid. That's how the fart blaming... Here's how the fart blaming goes, by dog, the way. Dog. I've never uh, never really thought about this, but here, here's the fart blame pecking order in a room. Uh, dog first. If there's no dog, then... Cat you... box. No. 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 Okay. <laughs> First off, true. No one ever blamed a fart on a cat box. <laughs> Seen it happen, but you have. There's a cat box sitting there. Yeah. All right. Well, if you're all standing over a cat box, I, I guess you could you could potentially pin some of it on the cat box. You go dog first. Yeah. And yes, there's me. Yes, if there's me, if there is a cat box in the room, you could possibly bring that up. But I'm not. I'm going to eliminate most things from the room. I wasn't even going to put dog in the room, but dog go, goes first. Second. Uh, Second person you blame is the uh, fattest person in the room. Uh, third is, uh, well, first off, uh, then it just goes to heaviest person in the room if uh, no biggest, one is fat. Biggest. Biggest person in the room. Uh, then if it's uh, a choice between minorities, you go white. Yeah. White, uh, usually the culprit. Uh, eventually, it works down to Asian chick. Mm. Aye! But, that, but that, that's, that's if you eliminated everybody. Women follow the men, too. Oh, and that's you, what you, I'm saying. Yeah. You go, you go fat guy, then uh, then you go white guy. Now it's a little bit of a standoff. You got a fat black guy and a medium sized white guy, in terms of who who you blame for the mm, fart. Yeah. I still think you go white. Hispanic guy could split it. Yeah, they got the whole beans thing going on, yeah. but they're not known for the gas. Those people. Oh, Drew says yes. Okay, I mean, blame the Mexican guy. Drew says. Then uh, you work your way down to uh, chick, white chick, same order, same ethnic order, eventually ending with the Asian. Asian female. Have to be the last person uh, in the room. Hmm. Hmm? hmm? You agree? Thank you. Where were we? Talking to Ryan? Danielle. Oh, Ryan wasn't done. Ryan. Yeah. All right, so you say uh, eat a grapefruit. Yeah, I'm going to have to remember that. And uh, you say pink grapefruit or uh, all right, what's yellow the que- grapefruit? What's the question? Uh, yellow. But anyways, uh, I do have a question as well. Uh a couple weeks ago, I was uh, with my girlfriend. We were getting ready to have sex, and I was fingering her. And uh, I pulled out something. It was almost like a mucus, almost like a snot or a cum or something. I wasn't sure what it was. Mm-hmm. And so when I pulled it out, I was just kind of like, what is this? And I totally blew up and for some reason thought that it was somebody else's cum that she cheated on me, something like that. Right, sure. And I wouldn't know if, like, a girl just makes that kind of thing. Yes, they do. Yes, they, they do. do. Yeah, absolutely. Someone else's okay. cum. 
Well, uh, like some I guy, some guy way, dropped right? his load in your girlfriend, and then twenty minutes later, she's, she's gonna... making out with you. All right, this 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 the this, this same mind who comes up with grapefruit. True, where's grapefruit rank, rank on your list of gas? Very bottom, very bottom. Under Asian woman? Yes, under her. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, grapefruit? Like, that's a it's a comedy answer for what gives you gas. Like, yeah. you'd say, this guy this guy could eat a grapefruit and blow gas. Yes. <laughs> right? It's like, just below styrofoam packing. <laughs> grapefruit. That's the kind of lame brain callers we have on this show. Danielle? Hi. 21. I, I basically, I put my heart out on my sleeve, and I asked for some advice from uh, the people who call this show about what what could give me smelly gas. Because I've had a dry run, and obviously I'm feeling vulnerable. What do I get? I get grapefruit. <laughs> What's up, Danielle? Hi. Um, the reason why I was calling is because every time I have sex with my husband, like only like sometimes, my leg, my left leg starts twitching. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Twitching or shivering, like quivering. I'm kind of bold, but it was like it twitches really bad. All right, twitching to me means it suddenly contracts and then releases, and then contracts and then releases, as opposed to kind of shaking and quivering. Uh-huh. You think Danielle knows what contracts means? I don't know. I can't get, I can't huh? get through. Danielle? I can't do it. Uh -huh. How long have you been married, sweetie? I've been married. It's going to be three months. Or three months? Yeah. You got married pretty young. <laughs> yeah. You have, you have some kids? Um, yeah, I have a little boy. Mm -hmm. Little boy. What's your husband do? Um, he works. He works for a motor vehicle. DMV. Yeah. For a motor vehicle department. Motor What's vehicle. he do over there? Uh, he does driver's license. He works at the window and. He's see, an angry, scary. See guy. See the guy who's in charge of not telling people when they're in the wrong line. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I like that to be my job. I don't know who does that over there, but uh, I like that to be my gig. <laughs> All right, so uh, can you get you a fake ID if you need one? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> so the t the twitching thing, that's probably, that's just you. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you'll be all right. It doesn't mean anything. It's nothing serious. No. No, 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 no. 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 Now you got to use some protection so you don't have another kid too soon, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And I have another Are you using any birth control? Um, no. No. Here's, I think, one of the problems, uh in society, which is people who get married early, they get married at 19 or 20, think, all right, well, our days of birth control are over. Oh, we're, no. we're married now. Yeah. Well, next thing you know, you're 24, you have three kids, and your son, uh, your uh, old man's working over the DMV. Mm. You know what I'm saying, baby doll? <laughs> yeah. All right, so get, have, all right, first you first. can ask your next question, but you got to get a little birth control for me, all right? I will. All right. All right, good. Um, he, he wants to try anal sex, of and course. I do too. Me uh -huh. too, huh? All right. But I'm kind of scared. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I okay. Don't, I just want to know what I could do so I could not be scared. Mm. It's going to be scary and probably uncomfortable no matter what, but lots of lubricant and take <laughs> it slow. Is it uncomfortable? You, most women. Not all. Are you, are you multi-orgasmic? Mm. No. The one, the, 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 <laughs> well, wait a minute. I think she was digesting that. <laughs> do, you, do you have an orgasm? Oh, yeah. You do? Oh, yeah. That's why your leg starts twitching, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you have multiple? <laughs> more uh, than one? Oh, yeah. Okay. Lots more than one? A lot more. Oh, okay. okay. So you, the women that have that sometimes uh, like anal sex. So you, you might, might enjoy this. You might, yeah. You take it slow. Anything starts hurting, you stop. Uh-huh. All right. Okay, I was just curious. And that's, right, that's when the leg starts twitching. Make when... sure the kid's in the room. <laughs> no. He's... All right. All right, but really, lay off with the kids for just a little while. Like that. Oh, you I gotta get that dream house. No, way more than one. Way, way more. I don't know what happened to the DMV, but for some reason it's... Uh, the DMV in my life has been like some sort of... Like, I feel it's like, uh, you know when people beat uh, cancer? Yeah. That's what I feel like with the DMV. the DMV, yeah. The DMV was a constant, it was a scourge in my life, for my, my entire yeah. life. And for some reason, it's been five years since I've been to that godforsaken dump. And uh, I just pray I never have to go back again. I don't know how it works. My license probably expired. I don't know what's going on, but I just... I, I, I can't deal with those imbeciles anymore. Where are we, Drew? Here we go, Michael. Michael? Yeah, right here. You're 27? 27, yeah. What's up? All right. 
No, my question is about female ejaculation. Mm-hmm. All right, now in the porno movies, you mm-hmm. know, homeboy is piping her down or whatever, and she mm-hmm. just comes like just all over the place. The whole water faucet scene, right? Yeah, now, it's my, not every porn movie. No, but those like 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 uh, Ultimate Squirting Machine three, you know, and like those, <laughs> right? Right. Now, now my question is, <laughs> Super Soaker nine. Why? Why? Yeah, you've seen the end. Ultimate like Homegirl Strict nine. That's a bad bitch. Dog. Who's Hydrant four? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, now my question is, yeah, uh-huh. um, if it's fake, then okay, whatever. But if it's real, how can I get my wife to do that? Mm-hmm. Not all women have that talent. Son of a bitch. Yeah, that's a bitch. How long you, How long you been married, Michael? We've been married for two years. We've been together about uh, four, four, four years. total. Yeah, we've been married two years. We've been together about a total of four. And Does a half. she know you're anxious to extract this from her? Well, she's a freak. She doesn't know. Uh, I don't know. We never really talked about it. Like, I saw a website once, and it had, like, instructions. Mm-hmm. Put your finger in here, massage the G-spot, allegedly. Mm-hmm. And I felt something. It was kind of like, <clears throat> like, if you have, if she's laying on your back, if she's laying on her back, and you're putting your finger in mm-hmm. with your palm facing upward, you go mm-hmm. back inside the vagina, mm-hmm. reach up and come back, and it's like a little rough ridge there. Mm-hmm. That's, That's the same, same place the same I have. Move. Same place I used to have the kill switch in my truck. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You go up and under the dash. You flick it. You come back and flick it. That's yeah. uh, right in the steering column there. All right. Uh, uh, Michael sounds uh, like a uh, salt of the earth type. Michael, uh-huh. what do you do for a living? Uh, right now I'm working as a computer oh, technician. Boo. Computer technician. Yeah. That's but, not bad. But right now. Yeah, right I, now is always well, bad. I want to go to law school. I want to go to law school real uh, tough. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. And how's that work? What do you got to do? Uh, well, I got to finish my undergraduate degree and do real good on the LSAT and then just apply to some law schools. And why do you want to? You want to be an attorney. Why? Yeah, well, you know, I wasn't always a computer nerd, so I had my fair share of running with the law. And, mm. you know, I mean, there are a lot of cats out there who, 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 they just get shafted by the courts. And I've been on the other side of that. And right. I think that, you know, that's kind of like a motivation and a drive for me to be, you know, a really serious defense attorney. I mean, if, I if like you're that. guilty, you're guilty. But if you're not, I think you deserve a good defense. Well, God bless you, Michael. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, that's nice. Yeah. I saw something went wrong, and he wants to write it. Yeah. I like that. I'm all right with Michael. But if your wife is not prone to do this, even the best uh, attorney could not kind coax a uh, liquid confession mm-hmm. from the wife's vulva. Thank you. Sarah. Hey, how you doing? You're 19. What's up? Well, um, I was wondering, I have never had my period, ever. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been to the doctor a few times. He put me on prolactin. Provera? Um, No, I only took 10 pills. Provera? I I guess. I bled twice, and I never had it again. Um, (laughs) Basically, am I ovulating? Because I'm having sex unprotected, not on anything, and I was wondering, is it possible for me to get pregnant? Yes, it's possible. But the, how the, the uter- Well, the uterus was intact. Did they, did, they, did they do an ultrasound on you? Um, I had two MRIs. Okay, and the uterus was uh, fine, right? Yeah. The, the anatomy was normal. I have no idea. I guess so. He, he looked have... at me and said that I was fine. All right. Did you have polycystic ovaries? No, I don't. See, I don't know. I thought that it was because of some medication I was on. What medicine was that? I was on lithium. Um... Mm. Risperdal and Wilbutrin. Well, that could do it. Are you on any medicine still? No. No, I um, I unmedicated myself. You, you medicating yourself? I unmedicated myself. You unmedicated yourself. Well, now that you're un- off the meds, you ought to get checked out again. See if there's some condition, a pituitary problem, or you know, what it is that's causing this non-cycling. All right, so if a woman doesn't cycle, how can she get pregnant? They could still ovulate. I think it's possible. They still drop an egg. Yeah, it's possible. But, but not, not, not slough like off. And hard to the, know uh, when. What is yeah, that? Uterus. Sloughing off the uterine lining? I mean, she may, it, it's hard to know what's oh, going on Christ. with her, but she needs a... What are women doing? Constantly deteriorating from the inside out? That's what it feels no, like they're reju- to me. They're re- rejuvenating. They're restoring themselves. How about you broads just hold still? They're, they're, they're uh, Yeah, what are you guys, snakes? Exfoliating. You gotta, you gotta you out, you outgrow your skin every once in a while? Yeah, but it's inside. Yeah. All right. That's one of those things, by the way, it was really crazy and attractive when you were a kid. Like, the snake has to shed its skin. <laughs> and then someone would hold up a shedded snake. Yeah. This is the skin of a... I don't know why, but I'm, uh, no one... There's a certain point where you become an adult and the whole snake's getting... The, the, the uh, shedding the skin thing... Not good. Never comes yeah. up again. No. It's never discussed.
Yeah. Drew, let's bring that up. All right. Uh, we're going to take a break. Drew, I'm going to talk to you about uh, snakes shedding their skin. You talk to me about hermit crabs outgrowing their shell. Ooh. All right? All right. All right. Hey, 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 yeah. All right, everybody. My name's Ace. It's my partner, Dr. Drew. Is that that? Hey, Drew. Hey. Hey, what's that? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, wait. Huh? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Hey, man. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. Hey, it's time for traffic. Up, 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 up. Traffic in the lanes. Blah, 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 four or five. Blah, 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 blah. Jackknife. Big rig. Blah, blah, blah. Moped. Blah, 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 blah. Traffic in the lanes. Blah, blah, blah. Slow and go. Blah. Tra- tail lights. Yeah. Brake lights. Let me say this. It's just once did you see that? Did you see that accident on the ten? By the way, on the way in here, it was a guy yes. lying in the street. Oh, really? I got off the freeway and like cut through uh, uh, Watts to get here. I couldn't figure out how it was like it was a pedestrian. It was wild. I just figure he deserved it. That's why I sleep at night. <laughs> okay, it's your, your Darwinian theory of life. He had it coming somehow. Uh, let me just say something very quickly. You know, we kid a lot on the show, but seriously, uh, L.A. weathermen, please kill yourselves, please. You sea suckers have been talking about rain for the last three weeks. It hasn't dro- hasn't not a goddamn drop has fallen from the skies. You retards! I didn't get my car washed for two weeks. I did bugs all over it from driving from Vegas uh, last week. I had turned my sprinklers off. Nothing. You guys do way more harm than good. Do you understand me? Just shut up. Get under the desk and start blowing the anchor where you belong. Do some good. Jesus Christ. What year are we in, Drew? How how wrong can these guys be for how long? Huh. And why doesn't anyone complain about it? Hey, let's talk to Fritz. See what he's got to say about it. You know, Fritz, he know he knows nothing. Well, look, I, you can just flip a coin or guess. You'd be right more than you guys are. You guys are actually wrong more than 50% of the time. Your your knowledge of weather hurts you. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Do you know what you know what weathermen are like? It's like um, when you have these office pools. Who's going to pick? You know, it's the final four. It's March Madness. It's always the chick who doesn't know the name of any of the teams that ends up winning. The guy, the handicapper, the prognosticator, the guy who's uh, reading uh, Sports Illustrated and the sporting news and all kinds of, he always loses to this chick. This is what goes on with weather people in this town. I'm convinced the more maps, the more Doppler radar you study, the less you know. Or maybe the radiation from the Doppler has cooked all their feeble brains. Because they've been talking... Drew, has it rained here in three weeks? No. Have they they been talking about rain every goddamn week? Every day. Rebecca, 19. Shut up, you retards. Just please shut up. Get into another line of business. Oh, why do we listen, Drew? Well... mm. Rebecca? Yeah, hi. You're 19. What's up? Good, Um, except for the weathermen in this crappy town. I totally agree. (laughs) Thank you. Okay, um, basically, I just, um, like, about a week ago, I Hold on a second. The other thing that makes me mad is, too, is the long-winded, the long-winded discussion of what never happens. Here's what happens. You see over here over the Bay Area, there's a high-pressure system. It's moving in. It's uh, it's a uh, Gulf Stream. It's coming in this way. Now, by Tuesday, it's going to be making its way uh, down to Southern California, LAX. Here. Tuesday, look for a strong marine layer with some, uh, some light and partial clouds. By Wednesday morning, say about 648, first drop, let's arrange time. It's clear as a bell on Wednesday. What's the long-winded dissertation about nothing? You know what these guys do? Here's what it's like. It's like me standing on the end of like a uh, four-meter diving board and saying, for my first dive, I am going to do a uh, full gainer with a half pike and a double twist. It's never been attempted before in Olympic, uh, at once in the Olympic trials by a Japanese guy, but he was unsuccessful. I, mean, I give this long-winded dissertation, and then I just do it, and I just do a jackknife right into the pool. That's it. And then, but here's the beauty of the L.A. weathermen. The next day, I get up on the board and give a long-winded dissertation about what I'm going to do again, and everyone's all ears, and now I do a belly flop. And the next, every day, it's the same thing. And then I will be followed by a half twist and a full gainer, and I never do anything. Cannibal. Cannibal every time. <laughs> but we listen every time we give them a forum. You know what I like? I really like, here's what I like. 
Here's all I want. Here's all I want out of TV. Right. I want I want uh, Johnny Mountain or Stu or, or not Stu or Fritz, any of these local weather guys. I want them to stand up and start going, hey, Fritz, uh, what do you think? What do you say? What's the weekend having? Sorry. Well, thank you, Chuck. Uh, we got a strong. Shut up and sit down. Just start shouting them down. Tell them to sit down. Hey, can we punish these people for being wrong? What about when you're wrong five times wrong? We got to listen to the next thing you're going to say. Here's the two-year forecast. They start looking down the road two weeks. Jackasses. All right, Rebecca, make it snappy. Okay. Um, about a week ago, I ran into um, a guy who I hadn't seen for about a year, and um, we used to kind of hook up a little bit. And um, basically, we ended up just kissing um, this weekend, and his girlfriend just called me this evening. And um, I kind of had an idea that he was seeing her, but I was just wondering if this is a totally lost cause. Like, I'm not interested in a relationship. But um, Why is the girlfriend calling you? Because I guess that she looked in his um, telephone like blog and saw that he had talked to me last night, really? and so I guess she was kind of like putting things together. But this is his current girlfriend or ex girlfriend? His current girlfriend. Was she angry with you? Is she what? Was she angry? Uh, yeah, she was a little angry. <laughs> now, what do you mean you don't want a relationship with him? That's ridiculous. What do you mean? Well, why I would mean, you? Why would you think of it as a lost cause if you don't want a relationship with him? Yeah, what's the cause? Well, just kind of like I mean, nothing like I know. I know what he's like, and he's not the type of guy that you can really like depend on. But yeah, right. that's what you Good. want though. He's a dangerous guy, but look, you're attracted to him. But he has right. a girlfriend. Right. You can do better than that. And stop the denial. You obviously want a relationship with him. That's ridiculous to deny that to yourself. Yeah, but he is. But he's not, not the not, kind of guy that. Will, it's, you're right. He well, will not. No way you can have one with him. He's not. He, he that kind has of a relationship that's currently going on, and he's screwing around on her, and just like he'll do with just you. Just get out of this. Find a find a find a uh, like a weatherman or <laughs> one of those pussies. I want to thank uh, some people that really uh, deserve that. I was going to say make this whole show possible, but uh, really they're pretty, uh, they're replaceable. Let's face it, I'm the show. But deserving of thanks. They deserve anyway. First, I want to thank uh, Brian hey, for doing a great a job quick. on the phones and the coffee. Mm -hmm. I want to thank uh, the gaseous one, Tara. Don't call me Tara, <laughs> goddamn, for doing a great job on the phones and the coffee and the breaking of the wind. She scared some three-year-olds, I heard. I want to thank uh, Junior, 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 producer Lauren for doing a great job. And for the comedy this week. In the comedy this yeah. week, yeah. Yeah. Bios and whatnot. And, uh, of course, the magic finger one. The uh, Liberace of the potentiometers, Drew. Uh. Engineer Anderson. So... Until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Female ejaculation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, if it's fake, then okay, whatever. But if it's real, how can I get my wife to do that? Mm-hmm. Not all women have that talent. Son of a bitch. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.